This is the kind of research I do, okay? Hello everyone, greetings. Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this video. On my channel, I analyze song lyrics very in depth through the lens of literary analysis. I tend to concentrate on diction, which is word choice and connotation, which can be thought of as like the vibes or the emotions that the words elicit. Today we are doing a request. This song was requested by one of you guys, so thank you so much. We are doing a literary analysis of the song Buzz Cut Season by Lord. As a quick disclaimer, music is very subjective, so everything presented in this video is my own personal opinion. I always tell you guys my own interpretation, but I do try to include a few different avenues of thought so you can take that with you and come to your own conclusions so you can vibe with the song more. As always, if you have any requests of songs you'd like me to do of any artist, go ahead and leave them down below. Let's get started. A buzz cut is a type of hairstyle. It's usually seen as a more masculine hairstyle. When I Googled this, I will provide a screenshot. It literally says masculine hairstyles. So it is associated more with males, although it doesn't have to be. I've seen a lot of females rock this hairstyle really, really well. The word season is very interesting. It's a little bit ambiguous in this context. It could mean like a literal season, for instance, buzz cut season could be the hotter seasons where people may choose to get buzz cuts because it's more manageable or it could be referring to a season of life. I'm gonna provide you guys with some research that I did about the buzz cut hairstyle. It is referred to as a very common hairstyle. It's like a staple hairstyle. It seems very accessible on haircutinspiration.com. It said that 99% of barbers know how to cut it. I don't know if they actually did a survey of all barbers in the world. Like I don't know where their data came from. The point is this is a very common haircut and it's accessible. It says that it's a popular choice among frugal individuals. In this song, Lord does toy with the idea of like socioeconomic status. So I think that's very interesting that this is an accessible sort of hairstyle. In this article, it talked about how you can even do it at home. You just need a pair of like buzzer clippers or whatever. It also says there are a few limitations to this haircut and it is surprisingly versatile. It works with most face shapes. It does make your head seem fuller and more defined. So it has a positive like attribute to it. It's going to present the person with it in a more positive light. As a recommendation on the same website, it says, feel around your head to see if you have any large bumps. Those bumps will become fairly prominent if you opt for a shorter cut. This is very interesting because if we look at bus cuts through more of a metaphorical lens, they are something that's accessible. They make something more manageable and they reveal truths because you're getting rid of what may be excess for you. Underneath the hair, the bumps are gonna show up if you have any. It's kind of just like moving away from superfluous things, meaning things that are not necessary, and revealing the actual true nature of something. I know I'm like being very analytical here, but I think this really works well with the themes that are present in the song. They use the bus cut in the military. The military is authority, it's an ordered group. They have very strict regimens. A military is a group, right? So by getting these bus cuts, are you now part of a group? a group that are like very disciplined. That's another interesting element to consider. If we're going back to the word season, in terms of like a season of life, maybe it's referring to a season that's going to bring understanding and awareness to your life. Maybe it's gonna just be a more practical season of life where you get rid of things or thought processes that you no longer need. Just getting rid of whatever is like deemed to be excess or superfluous. That's very interesting to consider, especially because we're talking about a haircut. Your brain is like under your hair essentially and that's where your thought processes and your perspective towards the world resides more or less. There's a lot of interesting imagery and like metaphorical things going on here. I always find that to be the case with Lord's music. If you're interested, I also analyzed the song Team by Lord, which was requested and I did the song Supercut by Lord as well. I'll link those both if you're interested. I'm gonna be doing more Lord songs. I noticed you guys are commenting that you wanna see more. So let me know down below which Lord song you want me to take a look at next. Verse one. I remember when your head caught flame. It kissed your scalp and caressed your brain. And then in the background it says, I remember when your head caught flame. Well, you laughed, baby, it's okay. It's bus cut season anyway. In the background it says, well, you laughed, baby. 
it's okay. The phrase I remember shows us that this is a recall that the protagonist of the song is having. Protagonist just means the main character. This is a very intense recall, but it's stated in a very casual way in my opinion. The word flame is very interesting. This brings in some fire imagery. Fire imagery is something that I talk about often on my channel in my lyric analysis of the songs Peace by Taylor Swift and Summertime Sadness by Lana Del Rey. I went a little bit more in depth in those videos. I'll go ahead and link those below if you're interested. I'm going to keep it pretty short here. Fire can represent many different things. In this particular context, I think that it's more of a cleansing sort of symbol um, if you think about fire kind of religiously or spiritually it's cleansing and purifying another thing that i'd like to note about fire is that it can be very beautiful and it can keep you warm but if it's not controlled it can cause damage and just be very like terrifying and not safe so the ways in which you can interpret fire really depends but since the head is catching flame i think this is more or less a positive sort of image and again i'll link those videos below if you want to see fire imagery being used in a different way the next line provides us with a very interesting juxtaposition juxtaposition is when things are placed side by side for the purpose of comparison it's also just very ironic so it's saying that the flames that casually are on this person's head it kissed their scalp and caressed their brain the word kiss and the word caress are positive and soft and sweet and they seem very loving but the general act of something catching on fire is not very chill it's like the opposite of chill it's like very terrifying but it is described using very positive words so that's a very interesting juxtaposition this metaphorical catching on fire appears to be like very cleansing and positive and perhaps necessary it caressed the brain and the brain is where thought processes occur it's just like the place of knowledge it's providing care to the brain perhaps it's helping the brain or the person increase their understanding and their awareness about something then we have repetition of the first line as a background vocal i always state in every single lyric analysis video that i do that repetition signifies significance i really believe it's very very significant when words are repeated the fact that it's like a background vocal it's kind of like taunting in a way when you listen to it a narrator knows something we don't like I remember like it's just like you're still trying to figure it out but the narrator knows more and they're kind of like taunting you they're like yeah I remember when this happened you as a listener you're still trying to figure out the significance of it that's the vibe that I get let me know if that makes sense in the comments below well you laughed baby it's okay this person whose head caught flame they were very nonchalant about it they seemed super chill and they're like it's fine it's buzz cut season it would have happened eventually it just happened earlier this person laughs so they're obviously not bothered by it it's mildly creepy that they're laughing after their head was on fire i understand this is metaphorical but still there's like a surreal element to this like they have a lack of awareness about how intense it is but that's ironic because the diction is showing me that they're gaining awareness there's a lot of factors at play here. It's kind of chaotic, but in like a very profound way, if that makes sense. The word baby, it's just like a term of endearment. Perhaps this is the protagonist's romantic partner whose head caught flame. It's buzz cut season anyway. Usually during buzz cut season, if you were to get your hair cut, like during the summer months, you would be making the legit decision to get your hair cut like you yourself would be like i'm getting my hair cut today let's go do it but in this instance it seems like this haircut was not voluntary it happened just without consent pretty much the bus cut season that this person in the song was referring to is like the haircut season there's a double meaning that i referred to earlier the involuntary bus cut that they got where it kissed and caressed them was like more of a metaphorical existential type of bus cut where the excessive unnecessary things were cut and burned away and the fact that it's fire imagery is very significant because when things burn it's like getting legit rid of something that's a very profound image the word anyway is very significant in my opinion it just makes everything seem more nonchalant in the background we have repetition of the lyric well you laughed baby it's okay there is the obvious double meaning and maybe there's like a triple meaning too maybe you're thinking of something yourself and if you are let me know below i'd be really interested to know i am kind of getting like a creepy vibe from it you're in a world that it's kind of like stepford wivesy or kind of like that movie pleasantville with reese witherspoon and toby mcguire and like if someone from the outside comes in they're like what is happening why does everyone know something that i don't know i get that vibe especially with the repetition of the background vocal this is a very interesting metaphor 
before and I'm really enjoying the way that this idea is being presented here. Let's continue. This first verse really helps set up the tone of the song and it introduces us to a theme that's present in the song. When it says it's bus cut season anyway, this reminds me of the lyric, but who cares? It's still the Louvre from the Lord's song, the Louvre from Melodrama. I think I'm gonna analyze that song soon. I really enjoy that song, but that's very ironic and I enjoy sassy remarks in songs. I stand. Verse two. Explosions on TV and all the girls with heads inside a dream. So now we live beside the pool where everything is good. Throughout the song, the news and the TV is referred to. It kind of, in my opinion, creates a distance between what's happening where the protagonist is. Seems like they're in their own little world, in their town or their like community, and then they keep seeing things about the outside world. It creates a very interesting dynamic of like an us versus them sort of thing, or like an inside versus like the out there sort of vibe. This is a very similar feeling to what occurred in the song Team. That one was a little bit more intense and there was like royal imagery and royal diction. Seems like like everyone here, they're in their own bubble. If someone from the outside comes in, they're gonna be like, what is happening here? But the people within this community are not aware of the weird vibe because they're immersed in it. And all the girls with heads inside a dream. Initially, the word head was associated with catching flame, but now the heads are associated with a dream. The fact that the word inside is used to me is very significant because you're existing within it, you're existing inside of it. It's like a door you open or like a hat you put on. These dreams have a very profound effect on whoever is experiencing them because they're like encapsulated within the dreams and it's their head. Their awareness or their thought processes are within a dream. So now we live beside the pool. The explosions on TV are very violent. So the dreams could be like a defensive mechanism, a source of escapism. A pool connotes leisure and relaxation. She's saying that we live beside the pool. I'm pretty sure they didn't like move there, but they are choosing to spend a majority of their time there in a space that is like synonymous with chill vibes and relaxation. This is kind of like escapism to me just because the first lyric of this verse said explosions on TV. The reality of the outside world is too intense for them to process right now and to consider. It says that's where everything is good. word good it seems very stable it's not great or amazing it's just good it's not like exaggerated it's like chill so i find the word good to be very stable and i think that perhaps the people in the song they're searching for a sense of stability the explosions show me that there is a lack of stability there's like a lot of chaotic vibes verse three we ride the bus with the knees pulled in. People should see how we're living. In the background it says, we ride the bus with the knees pulled in. Shut my eyes to the song that plays. Sometimes this has a hot, sweet taste. In the background, shut my eyes to the song that plays. Now we have kind of like a description of the place where the protagonist of the song is living and going about their life. The bus is an image of transportation and just movements about. This is reflective of how they live their life in their town, like the hustle and bustle. When they sit there, their knees are pulled in. This could mean that the buses are really small, but I think what is being described here is the fact that the buses are crowded. They could have a very good public transportation system, or they could just not have access to a car. I get the sense that the characters in this song are younger because they're like by the pool all day. They couldn't really be doing that if they were adults because they would have to work even during the summer, right? So perhaps teenagers wouldn't really have cars. Regardless, the fact that their knees are pulled in does connote a feeling of discomfort. There's not enough room and it seems overcrowded and just not comfortable. People should see how we're living. The protagonist seems fed up with the situation that they have to deal with. It kind of makes you wonder whether the characters in the song, the girls with their heads in dreams and you know the characters being by the pool all day, are they using escapism to escape from the TV or are they using it to escape from their own reality? And then we have repetition of the first line in the background. We ride the bus with the knees pulled in. It reinforces the fact that that is what they deal with on a regular basis. Throughout their day, they're reminded of this state of discomfort and unrest because they may be taking the bus so often. Shut my eyes to the song that plays. This is again, escapism. Sometimes this has a hot, sweet taste. I really love that line. Again, escapism, right? They are shutting their eyes. They are doing this for two reasons, in my opinion, just to be able to hear the song and to enjoy the song better. 
also to not have to look at the reality in which they are existing. It's gonna help with the escapism vibes, right? Because they're not going to have their daydream interrupted by looking at where they actually are on a bus where their knees are pulled in and their legs are probably cramping. Sometimes this has a hot, sweet taste. The word hot and sweet are very interesting. They're kind of opposite in my opinion. This is a very interesting juxtaposition. Usually something sweet isn't described as hot. Usually something spicy is described as hot. And if you have something that's too hot, temperature wise did not allow it to cool down. So you were like hasty or too eager to taste it and it could burn you. This kind of goes with the fire imagery in the first verse of the song. It's something that can hurt you. We know that spicy food sometimes can be cleansing, like it can clear out your sinuses. So just like the fire at the first verse that gave the character like their buzz cut that they didn't ask for yet, this type of taste could be cleansing or not, right? There's two possibilities. It could cause pain as well. The word sweet has a positive connotation. So despite it being hot, it's still sweet. It's something enjoyable and a source of comfort. I associate sweetness with childhood and with innocence more or less. The explosions on TV sound very traumatic. They're tasting something sweet to provide them with some comfort. The explosions are far away because it's like on TV, but it does not seem like their day-to-day -day activities like the crowded bus are super pleasant either. So they're like escaping things on multiple levels. Then we have background vocals that repeat the lyric, shut my eyes to the song that plays. This reinforces the fact that they need to have a sort of escapism to be able to move about in their reality, which is very sad and very intense. Verse four. The men up on the news, they try to tell us all that we will lose, but it's so easy in this blue where everything is good. Again, where the protagonist of the song is living is being continuously juxtaposed with the media and like the world out there. The men up on the news, up on just creates more distance. Like the TV is like up on there. It's like far away, it's out of reach. They try to tell us all that we will lose. It's like a they versus us and us versus them. There's a separation. There's two groups here. The people on the news are telling Lord's town or Lord's team things that they will lose. Whoever is telling Lord's friends this, they're not gonna lose anything, but everyone else's. You can interpret this as like a socioeconomic, a classist sort of thing as well. So there's definitely a few layers to this that you can take into consideration, but it's so easy in this blue where everything is good. The word easy and good to me connote a sort of dissociation. The word blue is usually not positive and you're feeling blue, you're feeling down, you're feeling sad, but it's stated that it's easy in this blue, perhaps to feel sad or down, it's easier. Kind of in a state of dissociation because you're preoccupied with your sad vibes. When you are like that, it's easy to distance yourself from the reality in which you exist, both in the town where they have to have their knees pulled in, but also with the world, like the grander scheme of things where there's explosions on TV and the news is telling them about all the scary stuff going on, where everything is good. Everything overall is so not chill that the good is in their sadness and the collective blue that they are feeling. That's very ironic and that's very heartbreaking, but that appears to be the reality of the situation in the song. Let me know if you agree or not in the comments below. And I'll never go home again, background. Place the call, feel it start. Favorite friend, background. And nothing's wrong when nothing's true. I live in a hologram with you. We're all the things that we do for fun, background. And I'll breathe and it goes, play along, background. Make believe it's hyper real, but I live in a hologram with you. So this chorus is very interesting. It ties a lot of things together thematically, in my opinion. My claim about them dissociating is kind of supported by this chorus, in my opinion. Let me explain. So the protagonist is saying, and I'll never go home again. The word and is very interesting to me because like in school, you're never supposed to start a sentence with the word and, kind of like a sentence fragment. It's cut off from a longer or fuller thought. This sounds like a conclusion. Like the protagonist has reasoned out a lot of things. She's like, and I'll never go home again. We're getting like a snippet of a conversation or a snippet of like a dialogue or a thought process. Stylistically, a vibe of just jaggedness, which I think mirrors the state that the characters in the song are living in and also their emotional state as well. And I'll never go home again. They were living by the pool, remember? So that depicts a lack of having somewhere they feel safe because they chose to live in the pool, but now they're like, we'll never go home. This could be their literal home, but it could also just be referring to a place emotionally or psychologically where they feel safe and at ease. They're never gonna feel that. They're noticing with the news and the state of their lives in their own town, in their own environment, perhaps in their socioeconomic class. 
But yeah, like the home base of their mind, it's not chill. It's happening at different levels. So it's like the outside world is not chill. Their hometown is not chill. And like their mind and emotional state and mental state is perhaps not chill. So they need to close their eyes and listen to the song, right? They need the escapism and the blue sadness is providing them with like a shield. It's like their way of dissociating in my opinion. Let me know if you agree or not in the comments below. Place the call, feel it start is in the background. I'm not super sure what call she's referring to. This could be a call to set something into motion to like leave perhaps because I say to set something into motion because of the word start. You would like place a call to like make a reservation to leave on like a bus or a train and feel it start. When something starts, it's like a new beginning. So that phrase to me is a little bit ambiguous. We don't really know what it means, but that's kind of the vibe that I get from it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Favorite friend, the protagonist is addressing their friend. This is very heartbreaking in my opinion because it's like they're all going through this hardship together and she's talking about like an escape plan. I feel like maybe that's what the start is, like an escape plan out of this scenario. The world is still gonna be terrifying, but let's at least leave this town where, you know, our knees aren't fitting on the bus in a comfortable way. Perhaps the protagonist is just talking to their friend. When someone is your favorite friend, it's someone that you trust. Maybe they're trying to plan an escape, a way to get to a better situation. In the background it says, and nothing's wrong when nothing's true. So this is just like straight up the definition of avoidance, right? If I don't acknowledge the problem, it doesn't matter. If I'm driving and I have a flat tire, like I'm not gonna acknowledge that I have a flat tire, so it's fine, everything is fine. But in reality, it's not fine. You're just lying to yourself. But perhaps this is what they have to do as a protective mechanism for purposes of self-preservation, at least for the time being, right? They can't handle the truth, it's too intense, it's gonna break them. I live in a hologram with you. Okay, now it's getting more explicit, like what's going on. They are dissociating. A hologram is a computer or like a laser generated image that seems very real, but it's not. They've had hologram concerts before. It looks like it's a person or like an object, but in reality, it's not. It's just computer generated. Um, I think they made a hologram of artists that have actually passed away. So it's just, there's no reality in this at all. She's saying that they're living in a hologram. First they were living by the pool and then they're like, we're not going home. And now she's like, I'm living in a hologram. I'm viewing hologram as an internal state, one in which they are creating a reality that fuels their escapism and that is allowing them to not go crazy. It's just a protective sort of mechanism. I think this hologram is representing their disassociation, which could be involuntary or voluntary, but I think that's a safer option for them than to face the reality. And I do think that their socioeconomic status plays a really important role in this. The lyric that said, they should see the place we're living. This shows that there are a lot of things that are very hard to face and the characters in the song are not ready on an internal level to face them yet. The protagonist does have an awareness that they're in a hologram though. At the very least, there is awareness that they are dissociating or employing escapism to an extent. We're all the things that we do for fun. So they're defining themselves by the things they're doing for fun, the things they do for the sake of escapism. I don't think they're enjoying this fun. It's a protective mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. This to me signifies that they're at war. They're at war with themselves to like try to deal with this. They feel like they're being attacked just by their situation and their status. In the background it says, and I'll breathe and it goes. They're trying to calm themselves down. Just keep breathing. It's gonna go away. It's gonna pass. That's how I'm interpreting that. Play along. Just go with the flow. It's like play along. Let's just get through this. Like we can't fight it now. It's too much. It's too heavy. Let's just try to get through this. We'll live in this hologram. They're, it's like they're creating their own world as a protective defense mechanism. And that's very heartbreaking that you have to go to that extent. The reality is so bad that you have to craft the entirety of like a hologram. She's not saying we live in a dream, which is very like mystical. And I think a dream is easier to achieve than a hologram because a dream happens naturally when you sleep or when you daydream, it just kind of naturally occurs. But a hologram uses like lasers and computers and like stuff. So it seems like to create a hologram is much more hard work 
than to create a daydream. They are working hard to escape. It's very heartbreaking. This is very intense stuff. In the background it says, make believe it's hyper real. So there's an awareness of what they're doing. Like they haven't lost it. They know that what they're living in is kind of delusional. When you're in that town, going back to that Stepford vibes slash Pleasantville vibes that I was alluding to earlier. These are the citizens in that town that know what's going on, but they're playing along. They're just trying to survive. They can't deal with it right now. So they're just trying to write it out. But I live in a hologram with you. The word but here I think is significant. It's like, despite all of this, despite the awareness that we have that this isn't real and that we're doing this on purpose, I'm still living in a hologram with you. With you shows that this is like a team that is doing this. She's not going at it alone. We're solidarity in numbers. Hopefully it'll allow them to get through this hardship together. There's like a sense of camaraderie in this very negative and difficult context. The last unique verse is the bridge. Cola with a burnt out taste. I'm the one you tell your fears to. They'll never be enough of us. Cola with a burnt out taste. We're talking about taste again. Earlier in verse three, the songs had a hot sweet taste and now the hotness burned them. So this is like the third instance of like fire imagery. You could say because we had the fire at the beginning that gave them the buzz cuts and i think it's the buzz cuts they got and that's what gave them the awareness to know that they're living in a hologram i think that's why they know they're playing along because they got that metaphorical buzz cut like they are woke to like what's going on and the fact that they they like know that they can't deal with it now cola with a burnt out taste their taste buds are burnt from the hot taste of what they were experiencing earlier. Their sense of taste is off right now. That's one way to interpret it. Like the burnt out taste could be due to the burning of their taste buds from earlier, from their experiences, like metaphorically, or the cola they're drinking could just have like a weird aftertaste to it. I do associate cola with like the summertime and that kind of goes with buzz cut season as a definition of summertime in a way, but this summertime is not pure. Like their childhood innocence isn't pure anymore. To me, this could represent childhood. I feel like in the summer, you have like a refreshing carbonated beverage, but now it tastes burnt out and it could be due to the cola, but I think it's more due to their experiences. The innocence of childhood has ended for them because they're getting older, but also because of their experiences and their life, the class in which they're living, things of that nature. That's a very interesting line. Let me know what you guys think of that line down below. I'm the one you tell your fears to. This kind of goes with the other lyrics in the song, like favorite friend, I'm in the hologram with you. There's a sense of camaraderie here, which I think is very important. It makes me feel a tiny bit better that there is a support system. There'll never be enough of us. This is again, us versus them. This is a group, hashtag team team underscore lord dot mp3 there will never be enough of us they're losing the war a little bit even though they have a defense plan they're on the defense i feel like a sports analogy would work here but i don't know anything about sports so like we're not going to do it it's totally fine they're going to live in a hologram but, but there's still not enough of them to defeat what they need to defeat the way i'm looking at it is kind of heartbreaking they're saying that there's not enough of us to be able to break out of our living conditions that easily when you're a teenager you really want to get out of your hometown sometimes that's kind of the vibe that i'm getting here they're like let's just write it out write it out we'll wait till we're 18 we'll wait till we graduate high school and then we'll leave but i think in the back of their mind they're like there's not enough of us like on our team to be able to make this happen. They're trying really hard to get out of their situation, but they're aware that there's always the possibility that their efforts are not gonna be enough. This song definitely contains a lot of social commentary and I think there's a few different ways you can interpret it. But that was my take on it. Let me know what you guys think of in the comments below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already, if you want. Let me know if you have any requests down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.